G'day. In today's video, I'm just doing a brief little review of the Razor Blade 13. This particular one came out in 2020, 2021, a bit of a crossover period. It's running an 11th gen quad core, the 1165G7. Just have to check that one, as the numbers of the naming of Intel is quite terrible. So this one here, it's designed to be a 13 inch laptop with an OLED touchscreen at 1920 by 1080 resolution. It is only 60 hertz though, which seems odd. It also seems, for something that's spinning towards a gaming computer, it actually seems to be quite good considering the hardware that's in there. I'll elaborate that a bit further in the video. But it's a 11th gen quad core, or i7 quad core, 16 gig of RAM, I've upgraded it to a one terabyte NVMe drive, it's got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5, and it is an incredibly light machine. So the weight of it is incredibly light and portable, which is what most people will be after, if they're, particularly if they're chasing up the Stealth 13, which has now been around for some years. Probably the biggest draw card towards this one is it's running a GTX 1650 Ti 4GB model. I believe that's restricted to only 40 watts. So it is a max Q variant, if you were to put it towards max Q, max P. So it is designed to be an ultra light, ultra or power efficient 1650 Ti. Now going back to regarding the screen only running at 60 Hertz, I found it's reasonably capable of playing most modern esports games at the native refresh rate of the screen and the native resolution of the screen quite well. So I've been playing Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 on there at 1920 by 1080 and it's running anywhere from about 50 to about 70 FPS, which if that was on a 140 hertz screen, 120, 144, it would not be an overly good experience. But being that this OLED screen is only running at 60 hertz, you get the vibrant colors, and the refresh rate really doesn't matter too much there, as the response time of the panel is reasonably decent. So I find for an overall package, it runs and performs fairly well. If you're playing CSGO, you're gonna hit 60 FPS quite easily. Any modern esports games, you're gonna hit 60 FPS quite easily, especially if you're, ha especially if you're happy to turn down the texture quality and various other quality things, but you can maintain the resolution and the FPS to match the Hertz. The battery life on it has also been very good, anywhere from about five to seven hours. Being that it's designed as an ultra portable machine, it's got the quad core, which is, I believe that one only runs at, I think that tr between 20 and 40 watts also. So the usage of the wattage is quite good. And one thing that has surprised me is the overall quality of an OLED screen on a laptop. This is the first one that I've owned that has an OLED display in it. And first time I hit control or delete and the screen went black and I was using it at night. I thought, what the hell was going on? I was seeing no form of backlight bleed around the out of the display, which is what I'm so common or so used to seeing on a large variety of laptops or virtually all laptops I've owned prior to this, excluding my mobile phones, which are also OLED displays. The 60 Hertz, even though it you lose the high refresh rate, it's still overall I find extremely good, especially if you get used to a touchscreen device. So this was originally purchased for my wife to replace her older Lenovo laptop. First thing that they loaded up was Uno. My wife and her sister went to play Uno on this laptop and her previous laptop. And the response was instant. She's looked at the screen and gone, look at the colors. Wasn't used to an OLED display on a laptop. We thought the other Lenovo laptop was looking pretty good. This absolutely dwarfed it. The vibrancy of the colors made the other screen look completely dull. When we loaded up the main menu of Uno, it displayed bright red. It looked like it was just a shade, almost a shade of gray on the Lenovo in comparison to this. Granted, I did get lucky and purchased this off eBay. Paid around 1,500 Australian dollars, where it seemed to be retailing at about three and a half thousand Australian dollars. So I'm not sure if I'd be happy to pay the, the difference there. The other thing that I did notice with it, with gaming, since it's an all metal frame, this all heats up during gameplay. So while I was playing Battlefield, typically you'd get hot spots on a laptop, usually around the top and around the edges. And this particular instance after playing Battlefield 5 for about an hour, the whole chassis itself had a slight warmth to it. Might have only been between 20 and 30 degrees. It wasn't exactly burning me, but it was noticeably warmer than when I first started. So the cooling side of it, the fans were relatively quiet most of the time, or quiet in comparison to, high, to 
180 watt gaming laptops. So if noise is a concern, it's pretty under control in this razor blade. The other thing, the heat, it was virtually minor, minute, wouldn't be too concerned about it. So overall, it's been a very good experience and a very balanced machine, which typically you see some machines that have a low end processor and a high end graphics card. This seems to be an overall good package where you're getting good battery life, decent gaming performance if you're happy to settle for 60 hertz. And it's got the touchscreen function of most, most laptops, so if you're used to that function, overall, as I said, it's a relatively complete package, but you'd be definitely paying the money to get that. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the Razorblade Stealth 13 with the 11th Gen i7 and the GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q. Bye.